Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. It's going, well actually to be honest, it's going a little bit slowly since the last episode. I haven't done a huge amount, but I do have a few things I want to talk about. So in the last one I was talking about how, how I want to come up here and put some modules in a lot of my um, systems. Particularly this one, the particle accelerator, which uses potentially up to 103 megawatts. And that's causing these... Are there any? Um... I was going to say it's causing these massive spikes in my power consumption up here, but um, they're, they seem to be a little little tricky. To, oh, here we go. Here, this this green one here. I'm also getting some spikes from the science labs, and the signal transmitter is quite a high um, level of load as well. So as I was saying in the last one, I, I want to stick some um, efficiency modules in here because I might as well. There's nothing else to put in here. Efficiency modules will help a lot. Um, so I had a look into what efficiency modules are available, and we've got four different well there's four different tiers that i can realistically make at the moment the uh, the mark ones we, we will uh, reduce the power con um, consumption by 40 percent which is pretty good then 60 100 and 170 so we're, those those are very very those go up very very quickly um and the the efficiency module fours are relatively expensive to make but they um as you can see they they will reduce the amount of power used by more by significantly more than the amount it's already using um however there is a maximum reduction of down to 20% of normal power draw. So in this case, I might as well just put in two of the minus 40% and not worry about the rest of it. So two of the really small cheap ones. So that's that's quite a simple one. A bit more complicated down the other end is these ones, the, the science labs. Now these, um, as you can see at the moment, I've got them packed full of productivity modules. And these are good because they, they, um, they do mean the machines use extra power, but they also mean you get quite a bit more stuff for your um for your for your inputs so in this case i've, I've crammed it full of um of, of the mark three productivities so from that i should be getting plus eight percent for each one so as i say this is in 24 40 that's 40 so in theory this machine should run 48 percent more efficiently and that means each time each time this bar fills up um as, as it runs normally from from using the inputs the, under, the bar underneath, the productivity bar, will also fill up to about, well, the bonus production bar will fill up to about 48% as well at the same time. When that gets to 100%, you get an extra an extra run of the machine. So in this case, one extra science gets done for free. You don't need to put any extra any extra inputs, um, um, supply, science packs in for that. But it does mean for each of those, you're using plus 80% power. So at the moment, I'm using, as you can see here, I'm getting plus 48% productivity, but I'm using plus 480% power. Now, one, the obvious answer to this is to combine these two different types of modules together. And I've done a bit of the maths here. And so as you can see, I've got the, the way I've got it set up at the moment, I've got the plus 480% power, plus 48% productivity. Um, that's with the tier three modules. If I upgrade all of those to tier four modules, then I get six, a whopping 600% increase in my power use, which is going to be ex extremely problematic because that's the thing that's causing me issues at the moment here. And you can see if I skip back to where the uh, science, the uh, labs kick in, they're they're using more power than almost everything except the particle accelerator. Uh, so that's that's a lot of power being used by those. And if I bump that up to, with another 50% on top of that, that's going to be crazy. That, that's yeah, we're going to struggle to struggle to power anything if this is if this is taking like 40, 45 uh, megawatts. Um, so the op the next option is to stick in some um, some of the um, e efficiency modules, as I was saying. So if I take out one of the um, productivity modules and stick stick in an efficiency one, uh, still sticking with the tier four modules, then that'll take it down to only three hundred and thirty percent power uh, um, power more power than normal being used, which is a bit less than I'm using at the moment, so that would be quite a big improvement, um, and 50% improvement on the productivity. So, so it's, that's actually better in every way than what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, the next option is I could put two of the two of the green modules in, and f so I'd only have be able to have four of the red ones. That would take it down to only using plus 160% of the power, so that's 260% overall. But then I'd drop down to a 40%. Um, a productivity bonus which means I'd be spent I'd have to put more science packs in to get the science done the next option is to go even further and put three of the modules in and that would then use minus 10% extra power so 90% of the, of the base power draw which if we look at it 
is apparently um, 5.8 megawatts, so it'd knock it'd knock 10% uh, off that, so we'd be down to about um, 5.3, 5.2 megawatts, which is significantly better. But then we only get the 30% boost to productivity, so there's definitely a trade-off there. Now, I think I probably won't go for the um, for, for, for the three three modules in there because that feels like a bit too much of a trade-off. But I am very tempted to go for the um, the five five productivity and one efficiency modules, uh, all at tier four, because that's going to mean I use quite a lot less power than I am at the moment. But I'll get ever so slightly more productivity out of it. So I think I'll come up here and I'll put put those into all of these machines and all of the ones at the top as well that haven't been moduled up yet because I just didn't have the supplies for it. And that's going to make things a lot better, I think. Um, it's going to make my science ever so slightly more productive. It's going to massively drop the or noticeably drop the amount of power I'm using. Except it isn't because I'm going to end up putting more of these, having more of these running. So. Maybe actually, given that these machines don't have any in, maybe I'll go for the uh, the two greens and four reds, and just bring it to a um, a sort of a, a slightly lower productivity, but a lot less power. That's probably the yeah, that's probably the the uh, the best way to go. So modules are great. They, as you can see, they're they're extremely powerful. They make massive differences to your machines, whether it's through whether it's the amount of how fast they run or how, how much stuff they produce, anything like that. They do make an enormous difference. And there's the speed modules as well, which I haven't really mentioned. And they can boost your machines by, well, for the three tiers I've got available for it to me at the moment, by 20, 30 or 40 percent speed. So they make them and that's per module. So something like this that takes six modules, you could potentially make that run th three and a half times faster than normal. Uh, they do although also significantly boost the amount of power you use there, as you can see, this is plus 50 plus 60 plus 80 percent and again that's per module and they and they add so you, you're looking at a massive power draw if you use a lot of the speed modules as well <clears throat> the other downside of modules is especially when you get up to the later tiers um, they get rather expensive so here we have a, a tier 4 productivity module doesn't look so big doesn't look so bad you might think but but this requires three tier three productivity modules and a piece of science and some um, circuits and a little bit of an exotic material in this particular case it's holmium for, for the productivity modules that's not too bad either except when you then consider that each of those tier three productivity modules require three tier two productivity modules that and a smattering of circuits as well so suddenly you're looking at quite a lot of stuff and it gets worse again because each of those tier three, sorry, tier two modules requires three tier one modules and some circuits. So again, even more, even more parts going into it. And each one of those tier one modules requires, I think it's five, five green circuits and one red circuit. So when you add up all the numbers, and I haven't actually added all the numbers up, um, but there's, let's let's just say it's there's a lot of circuits required for this. Um, I'll, I'll do the numbers and put them on screen here so you, so you can tell how shocking it is. And it gets worse from there on because, yeah, tier, tier 4 modules are great, but there are also tier 5 modules, and not only do those require 3 tier 4 modules and all of that stuff that comes with them, they also require, let's have a quick look, because I don't think I've even researched these yet because they're so out, they're out, so out of reach. Um, it's all of that and some of the, um, the, the products we're making up here for science. Now, those things, the, the Vitamelange and the catalogue, they're not too bad. I wouldn't want to use an enormous number of them because they're fairly, they're relatively expensive. To, the catalogues, at least, are relatively expensive to make, but the rest of it's not too bad. It's just the, the sheer number of circuits that go into making all of the, the previous tiers of productivity modules. It's it's a bit ridiculous. So what I've done down here on, on Norvis, in order to get this going, where, where am I? Yeah, it's up here, right at the top of my bus, I've got a little setup here that's making all of these modules that I'm going to need, at least up to tier three, because the tier four ones, I say, they require some of the sort of the weird spacey stuff. So in the case of the um, uh, productivity ones, we're talking, as I said, the machine learning data. Oh, and vulcanite, not um, not holmium. I've uh, got that wrong on the diagram. I'll have to fix that. It's it, oh yeah, it's the. Uh, the efficiency ones that require Holmium plate and machine learning data. So those ones I'm going to make in space, probably by hand, to be honest, because I don't need a particular. I only need like 30 or 40 of them, so it's not too bad. But then that means for those 30 or 40 of these, I need 100. 
120 of these, so I need 360 of these. So I need about a, about a thousand of the tier one modules, and each of those requires five circuits. So we're looking at six six circuits, sorry. So we're looking at about 6,000 circuits on this tier, another couple of thousand, there's 8,000. There's probably about 10,000 items going into those into those 40 modules I'm going to be making, and that's that's kind of a lot. Um, which is why I'm not doing all of this by hand. I've got all these machines set up, and and so far um, we've got a hundred. Oh, that one's that one's finished because I didn't uh, I didn't realise quite how many I was going to need. That's going to need to be about two hundred. Let's um, let's update that. <laughs> oh no no wait no that one isn't. That one doesn't need to be that many. That can stay there. It's these ones that need to be about a hundred each. So we've got we've got eighty four in there. I added this one on a bit later, so that's only got up to thirty one. And I'm making some speed modules as well. And the reason I'm making the speed modules is because let's switch over to map mode for this. Is if we look at the oil mine, these oil mines have been going for ages. This one's been set up set up for absolutely ages. Um, and that means that they've basically run out. As you can see here, my expected resources is a mere 4.2 per second, which is it's not very much. Some of the ones down here, these are t 2 a second. So the thing about oil patches in Factorio is they never actually run out. They just get slower and slower uh, up to a certain point. So if you chuck, if once they've got to that point, if you chuck speed modules in, you're just you're getting resources for free at that point. Well, apart from the power use, you're getting resources for free. So I thought. I'll go out to my oil patches, shove some speed modules in, and then hopefully it'll pull out the oil a bit quicker. As you can see, this has got up to 15,000 per tank, which means 177,000 oil, which is, that's pretty good. Um, that's filling up nice and quickly compared to what it was doing before, and I'm hoping that doing that will reduce my reliance on coal over here. And if we look at this belt here, yeah, the coal that's being fed through for the... Um, uh, for the coal liquefactions basically stopped presumably because yes we've got all of these machines here that are running off crude oil um, yeah crude crude oil and we don't need enormous amounts of that because all we're making at the moment is sulfur but if we can do that that takes away the, uh, the, the reliance on the big coal patches and therefore they're going to last a bit longer and I'm not going to have to go out and build up new mines on this one and this one and wherever else they are now I could go out and build some more oil mines. I probably should. There's a nice patch over here of almost 3,000% compared to the 300% I've got over here and the 300% I've got in this one. So those are probably worth going out and grabbing. But um, at the moment I have to admit I'm more interested in the stuff that's going on in space. So I'm probably going to go off and do that. Um... Yeah, so that's the the main thing. I, uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about this time is getting these modules up and running. Um, as you can see here, I've got several hundred of these. I was hoping that'd be covered. Let's do that. Um, I've got several hundred of these of these tier three modules now. So that's ready for me to go in and start making the actual tier four ones, and then take those up, and then take them up with me, and um, and start slotting them into machines up up in space. And that should and that should make things a bit easier up there because it it, it has the power has been a bit of a problem up here. And to a large extent, I blame that on this particle accelerator. That that pulls in huge amounts of power, as I was saying earlier. I mean, compared to the things around it that are sort of a single digits megawatts, that one's over a hundred. That's crazy. And I might, I don't know if I, I don't think I need another one just yet, but I probably will eventually. And making these as efficient as possible is also a um, a, a worthy goal. And by efficient, I mean input e efficient rather than necessarily. Um, energy efficient because um, but a combination of the two is, is definitely the best way to go so that's going okay the next thing I was thinking about um, actually no there was there's a bit of a, a, a rude interruption in the middle of this I, I discovered that my um, my, my solar my, my nuclear power plant on up on this planet whose name shall never be pronounced uh, got hit by an asteroid <laughs> by, a, by a, sorry by a meteorite um, strike and that took out one of the reactors which seemed um, rather rude so this is now down to three quarters power or possibly slightly less and entertainingly when the the meteorite hit here and was destroyed the and destroyed it and sort of was broken up into and then came, and then let me try that again the meteorite hit here destroyed the the reactor and then the bots automatically came out to sort of tidy up and do as much rebuilding as they could that meant they demolished the meteorite into its sort of component ores and things 
And then the bots flew out to pick that up, but they were a little bit too slow, so this inserter here that's designed to pull the fuel out of the um, out of the reactor actually managed to pick up some of the um, the ore that was lying on the ground. So um, now we have a little bit of iron and copper ore running around on the um, on, on the belt here. I don't think that actually matters. I also don't think that the um, losing one of my four uh, reactors here really matters either, because we've got all of the other ones. We've got, we've got the other three, and we've got the tanks of, of steam, and this this reactor was ma this plant was massively overspecced for what I needed on this planet. So, I I don't really care. Next time I go out here, I'll try and remember to take a reactor with me. But I don't see that happening particularly soon. There's been another strike up here as well in the. Yeah, maybe I should be putting in um, asteroid protection. Um, no, meteorite protection in my um, on, on these other planets. But then that that requires a sort of a, a steady flow of of the ammunition to protect them. So we've got the the meteor defense installations. That's okay. I could take half a dozen of those out with me and just set them up and leave them far and leave them ready to go. But then you need a steady stream of um, green circuits, batteries, and steel to keep them armed. Now I do have green circuits and I do have steel and I have sulfur and iron, so I could make batteries. So maybe I pro you know I probably should be making meteorite defenses on all of my um, all of my external bases just to keep them safe that's something to consider for the future because I do every so often I do lose little bits of little bits of bases I think the one on Myokin suffered a bit as well um, yeah there's some missing solar panels in the middle here that's probably going to be from that uh, there's some damage to belts up here I'm not actually using these belts so it doesn't really matter but still there's some damage um, maybe I have more um, more repair packs on this planet than I do on others, because and more spare parts, because this does seem to mostly be okay. Uh, let's have a look at frost as well while we're talking about it. <clears throat> yeah, you can see clearly down here there's been some meteorite strikes because we've got all this scattered damage across the the solar panels. Um, that mine looks okay. That one looks okay. Maybe it's not so bad. But it's still, it, it's a concern, and things do take damage every so often. So, I, yeah, I, I think having some protection against that, against that sort of thing would be a good idea. Um, where was, what was I saying? Oh yes, the other thing I've been thinking about is getting um, biological science up and running. And as I was saying before, I need to think about this while I'm still down on the ground. Because you've got, here we go, we've got the basic... The basic inputs we need for it, and I say basic, some of this is fairly complicated. I'm going to need to go off to another planet and set up a Vitamelange mine and get that um, being shipped in in much the same way I am with the Holmium and the Vul and Vulcanite to an extent. <clears throat> um, uh, so that that's yeah, I'm going to need to, to, to feed that through the process and and get that get that being built up and and and, um, and shipped out by delivery cannon. Uh, but also, there's all of these processes down here for making the the actual um, the green green memory cards and then onto the science themselves, and that requires lots and lots of new buildings. So I had a after being bitten a bit by this with the energy science when I went up there and realised that. I didn't, hadn't thought about any. Whilst I thought about all of the ingredients that would be used up by making the science, I hadn't really thought about the machines that would do that. And it turned out not to matter too much because you don't need as many machines as you do science packs, obviously, because you you have sort of one or two of each machine for each stage, and then you pass through as many science packs as you can, so I guess hundreds. But you still need to have those machines, which means you still need to have at least one or two lots of the parts needed to make them. So I had a run through here. It, it turns out, um, I mean, turning Vita Melange into the sort of the crushed stuff into the Vita Nuggets, that's a pulverizer. I've got those all over the place. That's fine. But the next step, turning that into uh, into the roast, which is done with by burning it with vulcanite, that requires induction furnaces. And if we look in the um, constructionary stuff, making an induction furnace, that's the thermodynamics facility. Making an in, 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 induction. Where is it? Induction. The industri industri sorry, industrial furnace, not an induction furnace. Industrial furnace uh, requires electric furnaces and concrete and, and miscellaneous bits and pieces. The miscellaneous bits and pieces are fine because I've already got those up in space from building all the other stuff like blue circuits, heat shield, steel, that's fine. I've got, got plenty of that. The concrete I need to make sure I remember to take up. 
Um, it, electric furnaces, I've actually requested those from the circuit network, so they've been brought to me, so they're in my inventory now, so I'll have some when I go up there. Um, I, or off to the other planet. And if actually, if I, I'm probably going to do that step off on a different planet anyway, wherever the... Um, wherever the vitamelange grows so i'll be doing that doing that somewhere else but i have a feeling oh no no i don't need one of those for any of the other process steps so that's not so much of an issue um lots and lots of the steps need um biochemical facilities uh like for example turning the vitamelange spice into the into the extract but um uh, that's not too much of a problem because i'm already making those up in in space and they're not too not that one where is it? This one? Yeah, they're not too difficult to make. I do need big electric motors and pumps and chemical plants. So I'll need to make sure I've got plenty of those. But I think I already have got a decent number of those in space. And I've been I've been making those and it seems to be going okay. But then on the um on the actual making all of the, the biochem stuff, then it gets a, a bit more complicated again. Um because, well, it starts off with just the biochem things, but then we need some of these genetic facilities, the, these things. Uh, and those need me to have made some nutrient vats, which is another thing to think about. But that is is that is in the list of things I need to make anyway. So I'm ju I'll just get it set up, of building those for the science, and then steal some out of the out of the um, out of the process for that. And fortunately, you'd, I don't think I'm going to need a gen a, um, a genetics vat in order to make a genetics vat. It doesn't uh, um, genetics vat. Nutrient vat. I'm not going to need a nutrient vat in order to make a nutrient vat. I don't think there's a sort of an awkward circular dependency there, like there kind of is with the biomass, but we can short that out with fish, so I'll get on to when I actually do it. Um, then there's a thermodynamics facility. That's another thing that seems to be that seems to be the space equivalent of the industrial furnace. So that again requires electric furnaces and chemical plants, and so that's something something else. I, and again, a thing I need to remember. I might need another plasma generator. Uh, that's this one yes this one um, again that's furnaces so that's uh, not too bad as long as I remember all of these things um, what else do I need so that's it for, that's it for the biocombustion uh, research uh, so should be able to rattle through to there then there's the um, the the biomechanical research and that requires a me uh, mechanical uh, can't even read my own handwriting here mechanical facility that's this one and that requires gun turrets now I happen to have some of those in my inventory just because because you know they're useful for sort of defending myself um, but I need but yeah it's a good thing I made sure I've got those and we also need an, an enormous well a significant quantity of concrete as well for that so I need to make sure I take some of that up um, and then the uh, genetics, and then for the the um, bio sludge genetics, I need uh, sorry the yeah for them for the genetic science, I also need um, a genetic facility as well. So I need to make sure I remember that. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of extra things in there. None of it's insurmountable, but a lot. But it does require me to have made sure I've made sure I've thought about it, and I've got all of the stuff I need um, in in my rocket when I go up to, uh, up, back up there to, to to start working on it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the things to think about. As I was talking about in the previous episode, I've got the um, these are the substrates that I was so short of before, and I've got now I've got five thousand of them in there. Um, I think that might not. I think I might take some more actually. Let's have a look at Norvis Orbit. I think five. Since it's made them relatively quickly, I'm going to increase that to ten thousand. Um, and that. That is now, as as you as I was saying, is being they're, they're all being made here by this um, this construction facility. And I've whacked production modules in all of these because there was a massive glass shortage earlier because it was all just getting dr swallowed up by this and by um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, low density structures down here that weren't being made fast enough and so on. So I've been I've been going around and get, getting a bit um, production module happy, be uh, productivity module happy. Sorry because. I just didn't feel like I had enough of them anywhere. So producing those, they're going into this queue here and being loaded into the rocket. Excellent. Now, one thing I'd forgotten about is that producing these also produces quite a lot of scrap. So that was getting loaded onto this belt here and then dumped, uh, wiggled through here. Yes, it's a bit spaghetti, I know. And then dumped onto my disposal belt over here. Um, that was fine, in theory, except that I, I realised that I wasn't making the... Um, my, um, what do you call it, machines down here, my recycling machines weren't running fast enough. One of these machines was not capable of keeping up with the amount of scrap that was being produced. So I've boosted that a bit, and that was going fine 
except it seems we've now got a um, a vulcanite excess again so that's caused the entire system to grind to a halt rather unfortunately um, and means this isn't getting through now hmm. since I don't produce any vulcanite on this I could do something slightly sneaky with this let's give that a shot uh, if I fly over there I say sneaky, it's not that sneaky. I... Oh, there we go. That's another, that must be another um, meteor strike on Miokin. Uh, having speaking of that, asteroid strike on Miokin. No, meteorite strike. On, yeah, on Miokin. It's that belt that went all the way up here that I don't actually care about, though. So in this case, I'm not going to worry about that. So what was I saying? Yes, I can put in. Uh, let's see. Do I have any red underground belts? I don't have any red underground belts. That's going to cause a minor issue. Never mind, let's do that. And let's so slow down anyway. That. That. Feed that around this way. That way, we can just bypass the um, uh, the, vul the bit that's clogged up with vulcanite, I hope. Actually, this. No, I'm an idiot. That isn't going to help at all because we're going to have exactly the same problem all the way along here because there's vulcanite coming out of all of these. So it's this, every single one of these is clogged up. Never mind, let's put that back as it was before because it was a bit neater. La la la, you didn't see anything. Didn't think that one all the way through, did I? No, sir. Oh well, um, I'm just going to have to use more vulcanite. And I'm about to launch a rocket, so that'll help quite a lot with that. That was one of the other things I was considering earlier when I was talking about how, how efficient the rockets are. Um, one of the things I missed was I didn't consider rocket fuel because I don't know I just forgot it. It was on it was on my list as just sort of a yes some of this is also required um, just as yeah some because I, I didn't know how much it was. Let's have a quick look while we're up here. To send a rocket to orbit costs fifty thousand liquid rocket fuel and fifty thousand so. 1,000 solid rocket fuel, and I've been making that, well I could make it from oil, but I've not been, I've been making it from vulcanite, so 8,000 vulcanite blocks, which is 8,000 vulcanite, okay, so we're looking at an extra 8,000 for an entire rocket, um, a rocket takes 500 stacks, so we're looking at uh, 1,600, yeah, so there's an extra 1,600 um, things used in there. Um, so that makes the rocket even less efficient. But yeah, I I don't know. Does rocket is rocket fuel as valuable as other stuff? I don't. It, it's it's difficult to weight these things. I mean, rocket fuel is fairly easy to come by. As you've seen, I've got more vulcanite than I know what to do with at the moment. But then on the flip side, it's it's still resources that's getting used up to to get my all my stuff up into space. So I don't know. So what I'm going to do now? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop blathering. I'm going to get this rocket filled up a little bit more. I'm going to go down and put some productivity modules in the uh, yellow science production. So hopefully I get a bit more, a few more of those through. Because I think that's a supply problem at the moment. Yes, there isn't isn't sufficient um, low density structure coming through. So if I go in there, slap that and all of these full of productivity modules, then hopefully that'll get around. And actually I can put some more machines in here now, now that I'm using um, the productivity modules quite so heavily. <clears throat> and that'll help quite a bit. So let's do that first like this six yeah twelve why not let's enjoy ourselves uh, see 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 whether that can uh, whether it can cope with that and I want to I don't know how to get how to put productivity modules in these remotely um, I might just nip down there and do it by hand and also in all of these up here as well, just to get just to get that bit extra from the earth from the rather limited supply. And then at that point, I will then have a mostly full rocket. Well, it's it's, it's mostly full already. We're talking what one? Two. It's a third full already. It's, it's two thirds full already because I've shoved in plenty of this stuff. I'm going to take some more belts up as well, I think, and I'd like to take up some more of this. Although actually, we're still making the uh, scaffolding. So that's that's a bit slow as well. Is that something else that requires glass? No, it requires low density structures. Okay, so as you can see, it's the glass and the low density structures and all that sort of stuff is, is causing a bit of a supply problem at the moment. Um, 
So I'll give it a bit more time before I go up just to get this full and to get all of the modules I could possibly want as well. And that way I'll be, when I get up there, hopefully then I'll be ready to just sort of carry on from there and, and just get things going a bit more um, a bit more efficiently. And the, the big thing that's going to change is that I won't have to make these substrates by um, up here anymore. Although that said, this seems to be full. What have you stopped for? Red, circuit, red circuits. Okay, let's increase the number of red circuits I'm taking up as well, because that's clearly a, um, a bottleneck. I mean, I already, I think I already have, but I don't think you can ever have too many. <laughs> have... Yeah, so it's about that is about the twelve thousand that I'm intending to take up. So I'll, yeah, I'll uh, I'll get some more of those. And there aren't very many green circuits, but then I don't seem to be using. The fact that there aren't very many green circuits suggests I'm not using very many green circuits. So let's have a quick quick check. A green circuit is only set to minus a thousand. I don't think I'm using as many of those, so I'm gonna or of those. But I yeah, I'd like to have lots of circuits available up here. And that's one of the things the rocket is very, very good for. Otherwise, what else has gone into the rocket in large quantities? There's not a huge quantity of the low density structure, so I think I'm okay for those. Yeah, let's put some more belts in and then call it a day at that point. Belts, 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 belts. 4,000. That's a decent number. Make it six. Okay, so that's that's lots of stuff, as promised. And I'm gonna, I am going to, in fact, call it an episode there. I think that's enough rambling from me. Um, the next episode, I'm going to be back up in space, I think, and I'll probably have modular, modularized all of my uh, machines up there, and probably quite a lot of the ones down here as well. And I'll be ready to uh, start building the, the the green science, the biological stuff, the, uh, the one that sort of smells and is a bit squishy and tries to crawl away if you're not careful. <laughs> so yeah, that should be um, should be interesting. Should go. Hopefully that'll go relatively relatively smoothly. Um, but I guess you'll just have to come along and see. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.